Okay, hi. Uh, this is a submission by Ali asking how to render the oranges texture. So I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, first of all, I'm just going to fix the base color um, because uh, the structure is there, but as a base, usually you will not uh, render the brightest highlights just yet. You will just put in some mid tones at most, okay, but still enough to see the form. Alright, so a mid tone like that should be just nice. Alright, we can still darken the shadows just a little bit. Okay, that's a bit too much. Just need a little bit. Okay. So if you've masked out the shape, it will be even easier for you to do this. Okay. So let's say that's our base done there. Uh, I'm going to select out the masking because otherwise it's going to get messy real quickly. Mm, just a rough one. So by right, you should have something that's more refined. Yeah? Okay. Now. We can uh, introduce some texture through a series of texture brushes. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to take a look at the reference here. We can see all these bumps on the skin okay, in the mid-tone area. And then the highlights are especially prominent. Uh, the edges are a little bit soft. So let's look at the soft round brushes and see what they offer. So maybe we can try, um, let's see, a speckle brush maybe to start off with. Okay, so let's create a clipping mask and I am going to try and use a soft light blending mode for the layer and I'm going to select a very neutral grey, dark grey, see what that gives us. Okay, so we have a bit of speckle going on now. I'm going to work on the shadows first and then we will move on to the highlight area yeah, as always. So I'm just going to lower the opacity of this to see. Okay, I think that looks pretty okay. Uh, we can erase a little bit of the texture, especially in the darkest shadows because usually uh, there will be less detail in the shadow region. Okay, so something like that to begin with. And we already see some uh, suggestion of the orange skin's characteristic. And now I'm going to move on to the mid-tone area. So again, I'll create a new clipping mask with soft light mode and uh, Maybe not soft light, let's try normal mode and see what gives us. Okay, so we're going to layer this on top. Alright, slowly build up the layers from there towards the lighter tonal values. And my computer is hanging. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to erase this again. All right. Okay. Not too much difference, huh? just a little bit. Um, okay, and yet another uh, layer clipping mask and this time we are going to layer the highlights on okay so I think I will use this sparse texture color dynamics brush I will show you how it looks like usually okay it looks like that and you will notice that it has a little bit of color dynamics going on, which I don't really want. Yeah, it's a bit annoying. So I'm going to switch this off. Okay, in the brush settings, just switch off 
color dynamics okay i'm just going to brush on a little bit of darker colors and then i'm going to add on the brighter regions okay so maybe in a circular motion you can just brush on the texture And I'm going to switch to a soft round brush okay, to brush out the values just a little bit okay, so that it's not so stiff. So we are still in soft light panning mode. Okay, so it's building up the layers now. We're still working on the base, not quite at the brightest highlights just yet. Okay. All right, I think that looks fine for now. And then we are going to move on to the brightest highlights. I'm going to start brushing those in once again. Sparse texture turn off color dynamics. I'm going to try soft light first and see what that brings us but I might switch to a different uh, blending mode later. Okay. I think it's a little bit too saturated maybe so I'm going to change it to screen. Reduce opacity. I think that looks a little bit more convincing. Uh, okay and then I'm going to brush this on. Just roughly, I'm going to erase off some of these later, so I don't need to worry too much about accuracy. Just the general location will do. Sometimes you can try and increase the brush size and see whether that will bring you some of the larger highlights. Okay, uh, I think it's more or less then okay so the next part okay, doesn't forget the side The next part, I'm going to erase off some of these. Uh, let me try using this brush to erase. So now I'm in eraser mode and I'm going to select this hard round texture spotty brush and see whether that looks better. So I'm just going to erase off some of the stray highlights here and there. Based on the reference, I must make sure that the highlights are in the correct location. Maybe zoom out a bit, see how that looks like. Okay, so that looks like a pretty alright approximation of what we're looking for. So the next final part is to actually slow down a bit and paint in some of the details manually. Okay, so I'm just going to select this hard round basic opacity brush, reduce spacing, and oops, I'm in eraser mode, that's wrong, okay. Uh, in brush mode, yeah. Let's just paint in manually some of the portions. You can also opt to use a hard round brush. Yeah, if you find that that gives you even cleaner edges, that's fine. 
but obviously in a hard round brush you can't do any sort of blending lah. Okay. So because the orange has a waxy sort of outer skin, you need to paint in the very sharpest, brightest highlights to give it that glossy finish. Okay. Accuracy is not key, just the general scattered uh, and the location of it and uh, the brightness, yeah, the toner values have to be correct. Okay, some of the mid toes also could do with a little bit of amendment. Because texture brushes can't always do absolutely everything. Okay, you do need to do a little bit of touch up here and there. So you notice that I keep changing my brush size because I don't want the texture to look too uniform otherwise that would re look really really fake. So this portion here along the core shadow that's really important to capture so that you really enhance the form of the orange Okay, so that's more or less how it goes. Uh, you can always add on even more detail, yeah, a little bit more speckles here and there, or uh, brush out some of the textures, textured area, so that it's not so uh, uniform. Uh, but otherwise, this is pretty much the idea. All right. So the same goes for the other side, yeah. This portion here, yeah, you can use exactly the same technique to achieve this texture. Alright, so if you have any questions, do message me and send me your files. Uh, and let me know if you need me to do any more paint overs. Hope you found that helpful.